Hello everybody and welcome back to the absolutely fantastic Formula 1 season that we are having in 1998 in one of the best mods ever to be produced on the Codemasters F1 game. I am your host, Mr. Ajams, and you are back again watching this series again once a, i'm just so inconsistent with this it's unbelievable i'm recording this as well half asleep literally ready to go to bed so uh, this should be good uh <laughs> anyway we got the malaysian grand prix coming up next uh, i know it says vietnam but ignore that because limitations of the game isn't it that's uh, <laughs> yeah and as you're gonna see throughout this race um and throughout this uh, entire episode to be honest that's basically, yeah, just limitations of the mod, and um, you, you, you'll see what I mean later on. But for now, uh, we're just uh, taking some grid penalties because, for some reason, in this Sauber specifically, our gearbox wear is very, very high, uh, which means, of course, last time out, uh, we ended up finishing P8 because of it, so... We're making sure to have a fresh gearbox for this race, and uh, we will also work on our durability uh, on our upgrades to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, and uh, hopefully we won't drop back any more places in the uh, next few rounds, but uh, I believe it's time to jump straight into qualifying. Yeah, as you can see, uh, things can look a bit weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it is, it is quite incredible that the fact that, you know, this, of course, is in on, on F1 2020, and the fact that Geki was able to get a track that's, what, four games older than this, uh, it genuinely is an absolutely incredible achievement. And, obviously, it's going to have uh, a couple bugs here and there, uh, but, uh, yeah, you, you'll see uh, later on. And, yeah, but uh, it's absolutely incredible uh, what he's been able to do. Uh, but uh, it's time to jump into our qualifying lap. Uh, fairly low downforce setup here. And, uh, yeah, you're about to see the amazing qualifying lap. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is how qualifying went. Pretty much. Entirely. <laughs> um, yeah, this... Uh, unfortunately, you cannot do one-shot quality here uh, in Malaysia. Uh, this happens no matter what car you choose, no matter what you do. Um, th this is just what happens. Uh, so, and I believe it's because it's trying to put you where you'd be in Hanoi, which is, yeah, just, just annoying, but... Uh, at least we get to simulate the session, and uh, we were going to be starting last anyway, so a uh, bit of a mixed up grid, because obviously it's taking the times from the actual 2020 grid, but it's still fairly normal. Uh, got Mika Hakkinen and Coulthard on pole position. Uh, the Ferraris are probably a bit lower down than where they should be, but they'll come back through the field very, very strongly. But we're going to have to start from last and claw our way back through the field. Circus has arrived in Southeast Asia once more as we usher in a new era and get ready to go racing here in Vietnam. It's a track that combines the bespoke design of a traditional race circuit with the tight, close barriers of a street track that our drivers race on today. 23 corners and a total distance of 3.4 miles. Watch out in particular for overtaking into the braking zone at turn 11. I genuinely would have really liked to have seen the Vietnam Grand Prix uh, on, on the grid, and I think it could have been a, a decent race, excuse me. <laughs> um, I, I want to know what you guys think as well. I think Vietnam could have been okay. I, I, I definitely think it... Uh, 
Uh, I think it was corruption that uh, unfortunately stopped it from happening, and COVID, of course. Um, yeah, and uh, one of the forgotten tracks and will forever remain on F1 2020 as the only little bit of memorabilia left. But anyway, enough yip yap, and we're waiting for the five red lights to go out here in Malaysia. It's lights out, and away we go. We get a decent start, but just get way too much wheel spin. And Mark Janay and Nakano both scream off into the distance. And we are just going to have to pick off these drivers one on one as our first target, Jene, into turn one, squeezes us all the way onto the grass, giving us absolutely no margin whatsoever. So we just choose to back out of it. But into turn two, we just get up the inside of him. And as you can see, we have overtaken him fairly easily there. And we've made up one place so far, which isn't too bad. And uh, if we can keep up that progress, We'll, uh, we'll do pretty well. There's a couple cars bocking down further up, but luckily no first lap crashes yet. And uh, let's hope this thing continues through this tight and twisty section. These cars do not handle very well through here. It's just understeer heaven as Nakano and I get very, very close. Rosset as well, just uh, getting out of shape. And we go up his inside into this double right-hander and we gain another couple places. These are going to be easy pickings on these first few laps. As at the end of the first half as well, we overtake Verstappen into the last corner. And that's uh, Alex Wurtz going off into the pit lane. I believe he's missing a front wing. Uh, unfortunate start for the Benetton. But I'm sure he will have another opportunity later on in this race to come back through the field. And uh, just a couple corners later, we then overtake the Arrows of Della Rosa as well. Uh, these three back marker teams are kind of going to be the easy pickings uh, for these first three laps and uh, he it weirdly slows down there. I'm not quite sure what happened. Uh, Mika Salo as well, our next target into 13th place and we move up ever closer to the points and our teammate as well is up into 10th place. Our next target, Magnuson, who's going fairly slowly in his shirt. We have some good pace around here. Our car seems to very much suit these lower downforce tracks. Uh, can't wait until we get to Monaco. <laughs> That's going to be very interesting. And we have a safety car, interestingly enough. And uh, I'm not sure what's caused that. Uh, I lie. I know exactly what's caused that. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, un Unfortunately, I forgot to turn the safety car off, uh, which you're meant to do when driving around here because sometimes the safety car will just randomly come out. And uh, you can see there, it's caused absolute chaos. And that's Mika hacking and out of the race into the wall. We're going to take a replay of what on earth happened to him. And he just drives straight into the safety car. Yeah, uh, you're, you're slowly starting to, to see the problems. Uh, I'm in half of them on my fault. I did forget to turn the safety car off as well. Uh, everyone's going very slowly up ahead. Not quite sure. It's, it's David Coulthard. It's David Coulthard who has stopped, and I believe he was missing a wheel. Uh, unfortunately, on the replay, it did not let me view him, which is uh, quite interesting. But after that, we are in the lead of the Malaysian Grand Prix because everyone slowed down. And, well, we're going to take absolute advantage of this. I think a lot of drivers came into pit after that. We uh, get very squirrely on the exit. And uh, as you can see there, the safety car choosing not to come into the pits and uh, it's still out of the race. And someone's, someone's crashed into it. Someone has crashed into the safety car. And well, let's hope that's not caused a huge pile up. And well, uh, well judging by the amount of cars that just retired, it has. Uh, the arrows uh, just smashes straight into the back of them. And you can see that it's just a Constantino effect. This is from one of the Minardis. I believe it's Gene, who just about manages to skate through. And, well, rather fortunate, but this is one of the drivers who was unfortunate. I believe this is Ralph Schumacher, who just has absolutely nowhere to go and gets hit up the back. And there's a Benetton out of the race there as well. That's three cars taken out. And, yeah, this uh, is sending it to a very interesting race. There's another virtual safety car. And I believe that was Eddie Irvine, who has had some kind of issue. And this is actually just a mechanical failure. Um, Ferrari reliability really let him laying him down there and he pulls over to one side of the road and uh, the safety car's ending but one of the Stewarts is out of the race I believe it's Rubens Barrichello it is 
as again he's one of the next victims to drive straight into the safety car and well this has been a rather interesting round already isn't it um another vsc again here we go um again it just randomly deploys uh, on occasion and we're going to use this time to come into the pit lane as well and uh, i had no idea where the pit lane line was and it was a little bit further up than where i thought it was and you can see we have an eight second time penalty as well and uh, that's because I got one for corner cutting, uh, which is, yeah, fair enough. And I also got another one because someone hit me and I got a five second time penalty. But I didn't bother showing you that because I think that there's more interesting things in this race anyway to to show. Uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll see that it, it is just never ending. As we wait for our first five seconds to go and out we go on a fresh set of hard tyres. And this should be a one stop. But uh, as you'll see later on, uh, it doesn't become a one-stop. So, yeah. But um, a tire wear, not too bad around here. Uh, our car's actually been pretty good on tire wear. Uh, of course, these cars are really, really horrible to, to get on the power. It's so difficult. And uh, that's uh, one of the uh, Minardis. That's someone else as well. I believe that was one of the Jordans. This is one of the Minardis. That's a Jordan that's crashed. And he just drives straight into him. Uh, not quite sure what was going on there. Uh, there's me going past. Uh, this is one of the Benettons, who I believe ended up crashing into them. And um, yeah. And uh, there was a Ferrari there. That was Michael Schumacher, who's crashed into him as well. And uh, they, <laughs> you saw at the end of that replay, yeah? Uh, one of the arrows decided to smash into the Benetton. That's four, f that, that was five cars there involved in one pile up. And well, this has just become a bit of a meme race at this point. And that is one of the Williams cars. And that's Jacques Villeneuve, who has been our next victim of plowing directly into the back of Burnt Mylander. And uh, I don't think uh, he's going to be too happy about uh, people just smashing into him the entire race. Uh, we picked up some damage as well from one of the pileups and uh, we decided to come in and fix it since we are literally a lap ahead of everyone else so um, we may as well hey and just make these final like seven or eight laps uh, just a little bit uh, easier uh, and I can promise you that uh, if we do come back here for next season uh, that I will be sure to turn the safety car off so that we don't have any problems whatsoever and um, we can have a proper race because obviously this uh, kind of does spoil the championship a little bit. And I guess we can kind of count it out. Uh, we can just not really care that this round ever happened and just pretend uh, that uh, it didn't happen. Because mostly it's just back markers getting points today. Uh, myself, Verstappen and Magnussen and Damon Hill are the only cars left in this race. So, luckily, the title challenge is not really going to be affected at all. And, uh, well, there's another car going out, and that is uh, Jan Magnussen, unfortunately, who's then, yeah, just smashed into the safety car again. <laughs> it's, it's hard to get hyped up about it when I've seen it, you know, like 20 times uh, over and over again. Uh, but anyway, we're around the final corner to take a uh, asterisk victory, really. And uh, of course, as you can see, I got really bored and just decided to make my uh, celebrations uh, premature before crossing the line and uh, just just getting close to the finish line. And there we go. We've, we've won the Malaysian Grand Prix. And uh, well, Jeff is a lot more happy than I am uh, at that result. <laughs> Um, driver of the day, me, unsurprisingly, last to first, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, interesting race. Congratulations to Alfa Romeo, then, for their excellent win today. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. Looks like they're on their way out to the podium now. Oh, what a result this is. And a popular one with the crowd as well. Great stuff to see the Alfa Romeo team on top here today.
yeah, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm speechless, to be honest. Um, probably the same as all of you are as well. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, all I can say is, uh, yeah, sorry, I guess. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I don't really like it when, when games do this and, you know, it just has a bit of a weird effect on the championship. It's like if any of you have played uh, F1 99202 and you race at Monaco and you end up with like three people finishing the race. Uh, kind of like that. Uh, and uh, Imola as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we can basically just not count this race. Uh so it, it's been really weird to edit as well because I've had like so many clips of people crashing into each other and just having to trim them all down uh, into tiny little sections. It was it was entertaining to say the least. And uh, you can see there as well, still in third in the constructors. Uh, that's where the benefit is really going to come in. Uh, drivers, we lead because, y yeah, <laughs> uh, Josh Verstappen is somehow now sixth in the championship, which is just hilarious. Um, we obviously won't be leading for long. Uh, that's only going to last maybe a race <laughs> until we finish 10th in the next one. Or even DNF. We don't know. But uh, yeah, sorry that this uh, <laughs> this event was a little bit, yeah, not 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 uh, up to standard. But um, yeah, so I tried my best with what I had. But it was entertaining nonetheless. So there's a benefit. But anyway, I really hope you guys uh, somehow uh, enjoyed this video. And um, yeah, I will see you guys next time for the Dutch Grand Prix.